Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome to an exciting video today in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, looking at a new feature that the Fly-by-Wire team have added to their A32NX mod. This is the fixes page on the McDo. Now, we can use this for a whole host of different things, but I'm going to cover a few things that I'm going to use it for when I'm doing my live streams, and of course, real-world pilots will use it for, uh, for similar things as well. We can use use it to get better situational awareness around our airports. We can also use it to add particular fixes, waypoints along our routes that we may not be specifically flying over. With that, there's a whole host of extra benefits we have. We can even add a sort of top of descent marker to our, uh, our navigation display, which of course will be very, very handy. It becomes in very useful for adding uh, areas of minimum safe altitudes. And of course, we can also put in go around tracks, or certainly we can add the go around procedures a little bit better so we've got a visual representation of them on the navigation display so we're going to go in and see just what this fixes page does and how we can use it and make our flight experience more realistic as per the real world and also see how it actually makes a lot of things much easier let's take a look so here we are sat in the flight deck of the experimental version of the fly-by-wire A32NX mod and as you can see I've uh, put a quick route in departing out of Innsbruck here today heading down to Naples which we're going to be using for the basis of this tutorial. Now Innsbruck of course is famous for its terrain surrounding the airport we're currently in a valley and we need to play particular attention to the minimum safe altitudes very important in an emergency situation. The minimum safe altitudes are shown on the charts and they are represented by these uh, light brown beige radials and lines that you can see on the chart just here. So the minimum safe altitudes for this departure that I've got programmed in at the moment is all based off the Rattenberg NDB, which you can see Romeo Tango Tango. And you can see that the 25 mile radius around this is actually split up into to certain sectors. Now, obviously, this is nice and clear on the chart, and we can see that the sectors are divided up using radials. But if we were flying out in poor visibility today, and we had an emergency, and we needed to know quickly where we were in respect of the Rattenberg uh, NDB, then it would be quite nice to have this information sort of depicted on our navigation display. And that is something that we can now do thanks to the Fly-by-Wire team making the Fixes page operational. So let's go ahead and show you how you would put this information into the Fixes page so that it is all shown on your navigation display. To access the fixes page, go to the flight plan page and then click on the top left of the line side key number one. And once you press that, you will get to this menu where you can then press the fix info key. And that will bring up the page ready for you to start adding fix information into the McDo. So the first thing we're going to need to do is add the Rattenberg NDB information into the fixes page. So let's just go ahead and type that in and then once we've done that we'll see that we have the option to add radials for emanating out from this fix and we can also draw a DME uh, circle around the uh, the particular fix as well the first thing we we'll want to do then is we want to add the 045 and 120 lines showing now on the N uh, on the navigation display, uh, the lines are going to emanate out from the Rattenberg NDB. So we actually need to pop in the reciprocals or opposite headings to these. Very easy to work out. You just need to add or subtract 180 from those. So for the first one, which is at a 45, then the opposite of 45 is 225. Again, you just had 180 to that. So now that has been done, you can see the blue dashed line 
is giving us that 45 degree entry from Rattenberg NDB. So that is the first line of the minimum safe altitude now being drawn on there. Let's go ahead and pop in the uh, the second one. So as shown on the chart, it's at a heading of 125 inbound. The reciprocal of this is 300 degrees. So let's go and add that to the, uh, to the navigation display. And now if we have a look, we can see that we've actually got that showing quite nicely on our navigation display. And obviously, with the aircraft logo also being shown on there as well, let me just resize this up so you can see that a bit more clearly. With the aircraft uh, being shown on there as well, the aircraft icon, you've got now a very clear picture of the minimum safe altitude. You know where we are at the minute. The minimum safe altitude is 11,600 feet. And then below that, we know that the sector to the south is 14,200 feet. And as we fly a departure out towards our first waypoint after the SID, we'll know that we're nice and safely uh, in that sector at 14,200 feet. We can keep an eye on our altitude. Now, obviously, if you've got great weather outside, you'll be able to see this visually. But if you're flying in rubbish weather and you know you've got high terrain around you, that is a very, very useful little tool that pilots can use. So very quickly, without having to refer to charts and work out where they are, they can see clearly on the navigation display where they are. So I also mentioned that we could also add a sort of crude top of descent marker to our uh, navigation display as well. Well, this is the arrival I'm taking into Naples and we can see that Bento, at Bento here, I uh, I want to be at 7,000 feet. Well, if I'm flying, let's say, at an altitude of 350, uh, I'm going to have to lose 28,000 feet. 28 multiplied by 3 is 84. So 84 miles outside of Bento, I want to start thinking about that top of descent. Of course, in, the, uh, in a real flight, we'd be looking at headwinds and we'd be looking at tailwinds, etc. But let's put that marker on our navigation display. So let's go ahead now and uh, enter Bento in there to uh, to begin with. Once we've done that, I've just said I want to start thinking about that top descent. Let me just make sure we select the uh, correct one. There it is. Uh, so at 84 miles away from Bento, I want to start thinking about that top of the descent. Let's put a radius ring around that. And now let's have a little look. If I uh, scroll through the flight plan and maybe just zoom out a little bit uh, as well. There we go. Uh, so let me just come down here and scroll down. And there we can see we have got uh, the blue dash ring again. And that is now at 84 miles outside of Bento. So obviously as I'm flying, when my aircraft dissects this ring on the navigation display, I know I'm 84 miles out away from, uh, from Bento. I have, of course, in the past used the distance bearing two page to be able to work out how far I am away from a specific waypoint, uh, and that's fine. But if I've now got that on the navigation display, I don't have to keep looking down at the McDo, uh, which in a uh, in a 2D simulator environment is uh, is really really handy. So instead of having to use the prog page and looking at my distance here, I've now got it showing quite nicely on the navigation display. So another great way that I can use the fixes page to help me pilot the aircraft successfully. Another great use of this uh, fixes page is the fact that you can just add fixes back onto your navigation display if you've had them removed by uh, perhaps maybe doing a direct to. Now, if you're flying on VATSIM and you've followed any of our live streams, you'll know that potentially we'll get some direct. So I could get a direct to uh, this waypoint just here, uh, and that's fine. But say I also wanted to do a fuel check at uh, Naxxas, as you can see uh, we're headed towards there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the direct that uh, ATC could potentially ask me uh, ask me to do. So let's just go ahead and uh, and do that. And you'll see that as I do that and insert it, all the waypoints between where I currently am and the waypoint I'm now going direct to have disappeared. Well, that means I can no longer do the fuel check that I had uh, had planned. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to get an accent back on my navigation display. So I know that when we're a beam that I can do the fuel check and know that uh, all is well. So let's go back to the fixes page and enter that fix back in. And once we've done that, we'll have a little look up. And there it is. It's back there. So as soon as I get a uh, beam that, uh, and if I zoom in, you can see 
we get much closer uh, I can do my I can do my fuel check now obviously the uh, little t uh, the little sort of example I've given here we're actually only uh, 50 so miles away uh, so it's only a very short direct to but sometimes we'll get a direct to a waypoint which could be two three hundred miles away uh, and I don't particularly want to be flying that far without being able to check the fuel so a really useful way of being able to keep an eye on your fuel in comparison to your operational flatland so you know everything is uh, working well and and you're not running out of fuel. Another really useful feature of the Fixus page is we can utilize this to help us uh, put information in in the event of a go around. Now, at the moment, the go around track, which would normally be found in the real aircraft after your flight plan, so that if you were doing a go around, uh, it's automatically there, all waiting for you. At the time this video has been filmed, uh, that is not currently uh, working. But we can use the fixes page to help us now. So here is the missed approach procedure for our arrival into Naples. And as you can see, it says written out proceed on uh, basically on runway heading, climbing to 6,000 feet at 750 feet. Uh, but not before 1.3 uh, DME from Naples and 3.1 from POM. Uh, we make a left turn, max 185 knots, onto a 180 radial. Uh, sorry, 180 heading to join the 342 radial inbound uh, to Sierra Oscar Romeo uh, NDB and cross Gemma at. 4,000 feet. Uh, this is now depicted uh, on the chart here in, in sort of a map format, but wouldn't it be great if we had something like this as well on the navigation display? Because obviously go-arounds are quite pressurized little moments, there's lots going on, and the fact that at the moment we've got to use raw data in the simulator because we've no go-around track, if I can have this on my navigation display, that is going to make flying the go around so much easier, particularly if you're on VATSIM as well, so you can do it all uh, correctly and properly. So let's have a look how we could put something like this onto our navigation display using the uh, using the fixes page. The first thing we're going to need to do, of course, is add the two waypoints, the Sorrento and the Gemma fixes. I've still got the Naxon waypoint showing here. Uh, obviously, I don't need that anymore. You don't need to clear this out either. You can simply overwrite it. So let's pop the uh, Gemma fix in first. And then we can go on to the second page. You can add up to four of, uh, of these. So if we go on to the second page to add the second fix in that we're going to use. And both are now entered. We just, of course, always need to make sure that we're adding the uh, correct one. Got both a VOR and NDB showing there. Either will do. And if we scroll down to the bottom and then have a look on the navigation display, we just need to set this up. Uh, if I zoom out a little bit, we should now be able to see both of them depicted on the navigation display. So already we've got a lot more situational awareness and we can see uh, compared to the charts, those nicely lined up exactly where we would expect them to be. And now we're going to pop in the 342 radial in there. So we have the track that we would need to intercept if we were flying the go around. So let's just pop that in, 342. And now if you have a look, there again, we have the blue dashed line showing us uh, where we would need to fly towards and then track uh, in order to fly the go around as is depicted on the chart. Let me just zoom that in a bit more so you can see a little more uh, a little more clearly and scroll down the flight plan. And, uh, and there it is. So we would do the go around. We'd make a left hand turn to a heading of 180 degrees and then we would intercept this track, fly this track and enter the uh, enter the holding point again as shown on the chart. The fact that I've now got on that on the navigation display means I'm not having to look at the chart, try and work out what it is I'm doing, where I'm flying towards etc. all whilst handling the go around as well because of course remember we have to do this uh, manually at the moment as the go around track is not inserted uh, at the time of filming this video. Once it is you be able to fly this in nav mode because that would be waiting for you automatically there in the uh, the flight plan at the bottom hopefully then you've seen how the fixes page can be used and this video has given you some extra context as to how we can implement 
and sort of manipulate this in certain circumstances to get things like the top of descent markers shown. Uh, we can add waypoints, do the fuel checks, minimum of safe altitudes, and go around tracks as well. A big shout out to the fly-by-wire team. Uh, they continue to do a great job by making more of these little features uh, working and implemented in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So please do give them uh, a thumbs up, a big like on uh, on that as uh, as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you do have any questions, then please do leave a comment down below and I'll come back and, uh, and answer those as best I can. Thank you for watching. And if you are brand new to the channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell as well so you don't miss any future content. I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Thank you so much. Speak to you again soon. Bye-bye for now.